what is brand identity and why is it so important? And that kind of goes hand in hand with some of the stuff that we're talking about. If somebody understands and knows that you're someone who's going to answer the phone versus just send an email. And that's something that definitely from an old job, obviously that's not specific with brand identity, but a lot can be lost when you're just doing something through an email or text, whereas you can pick up the phone, hear somebody know what they're meaning. And so that can go into part of your brand identity of being, I'm the one that's going to answer the phone and not just send you an email. But obviously there's a lot more that kind of goes into your identity, obviously. And one of the things, I I don't know if we talked about this, uh, but I kind of have this idea stuck in my head that if let's say Nike was to create a hotel, we would know what that hotel, we would kind of already have a sense of what that hotel would be versus if Hilton decided to come out with a tennis shoe, I don't think anybody would really know what that would look like. So I'll let you kind of take it from here as far as what is brand identity to you. I mean, I think that, um, I think you kind of nailed it with the Nike thing and the fact that if, if you, if your company has a brand, what does that brand say? Without you saying anything, what does that brand speak? You know, um, you know, whether you want to talk about Nike, whether you want to talk about like Virgin Atlantic, like there's, you know, there's a thought that comes in your mind to what like a flight on Virgin is versus I'll say another airline spirit. What comes along with that? I mean, or, you know, um, so even among airlines, it's like, you know, what do you, you know, if I say the word spirit, you think, OK, no frills. It's uncomfortable, but it's I'm probably going to get it cheap. It's going to be cheap but not much else. Like it's hopefully going to safely get me to where I want to go as cheap as I possibly could get there. Same could probably be said for frontier. Um, but then you start talking about some other airlines, like I said, like Virgin Atlantic or, you know, um, Emirates. Emirates, something like that. And the, the expectation is a much greater experience that goes along with getting you safely to where you're going to go. So again, and how do you know that? You know that a little bit from experience, but I think you also know that a little bit from the branding that those companies do. Um, so I think that if I were to sum up like brand identity, it's like if somebody were to think about your company, what would they say about your company without you you know, leading them with like what you'd want them to say about your company? Is your company, does it do great work, but you're not the cheapest person in town? Is it that, well, there might be some mistakes that might not be perfect, but it's super cheap. It's way cheaper than anybody else. Thought. Those are both brands. I mean, and, and I'm not even here to say one is better than the other. Sometimes you know, somebody can make a really good living being the you know a least expensive guy, but uh, you know, Earl Scheib painted cars. For a lot of years, and Earl Shy paint jobs are known to not be good paint jobs, but they were cheap, and they, for a lot of people, they were good enough. Um, so I think there's a lane, but I think what you, when we start talking about brand identity, I think what you can't do is you can't be. Um, and I'm not trying. To, I'm not trying to use a big word here, but you can't be ambiguous about what that brand identity is. You can't be the cheap guy one day and the most expensive guy the next or whatever. You have to pick a lane of what your company represents and you have to stay in that lane. If somebody's paying extra money to your company because the brand you have is that you do really high quality work, then you need to have a program in place that if you have a job that slips through that's not the highest quality work, that you take care of that for somebody. There's an expectation that comes along with the branding you've created. So... um, I think it's important because, especially today, to answer the second part of that question, because people, I mean, you know, people have expectations when they reach out to a brand, Uh, you know, so even the way your website appears, everything is part of your brand, your logo, the, the way your building looks, everything is part of your brand. And where, why it's important is where customers tend to get upset is when there's a disconnect between what your brand is and what you delivered. If your brand is we're the least expensive place in town and and there's not, you know, when you have a bad play experience on spirit, you don't tend to get as upset about it because you sort of knew what you were getting into when you flew spirit in the first place. 
if you pay the money and you get on an Emirates plane and you have a bad experience, you're probably going to not be thrilled about that. And you may even write an email to Emirates letting them know that you're unhappy about it. So where there's a problem and why it's branding is important is when there's a disconnect between what you're delivering and what your branding says you're going to deliver. Yeah. I'm uh, your, no, that, that I think yeah. that makes sense. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm being distracted because I'm trying to bring up, uh, uh, like I said, the, the guy that I was talking to, we've had an ongoing conversation and brand identity was definitely a conversation we had a while ago. And he definitely helped guide me as far as trying to figure out what I was doing and trying to understand it for, I wouldn't say for us, it's harder, but like for a marketing company, trying to understand like what your brand identity is, is a little bit trickier than say, if you have a specific product and you're, or like a line of products. And so it was kind of a dilemma for me to try to figure out exactly what am I doing or how am I portraying myself? And so he sent me this thing about archetypes. And he, there's, I think, 12 different archetypes as far as being a business owner. And it's understanding what fits your personality best as far as what you're putting out uh, on social media or how you're trying to portray yourself. And so I'm going to put the link up in the comments here. And it's it's something to think about when you're going through because it gives different ideas of understanding like how Disney has a specific archetype versus Nike yeah. versus uh, Chanel or, or whatever other one, other major name brands that you kind of know, they all kind of have a specific idea and whether it's the colors they're bringing in the, the phrasing in their, their ads or just the, the pictures or stuff that they're portraying. I think like we mentioned before, whether it's Emirates or Virgin, I think you're thinking of a high class, like you said before, if it's something yeah. where you get a bad experience on something that you're expecting to be almost first class seats throughout the entire plane. And if you don't have that experience, you kind of like, well, that wasn't what I assumed that this brand was going to give me. And so you can kind of have that understanding of figuring out like exactly what, if it's something that you're searching through and trying to figure out exactly what your brand identity is, this might be the one of the first few stepping stones is trying to figure out like, okay, I I can understand that I'm kind of this, this, and this, and this might be the direction that I want to go to. Obviously, everybody's different. So we all kind of have different personalities. And this kind of gives like how every business has a different personality as far yeah. as what you're projecting. And I think you got to make sure that with what you're projecting is is in line with your brand. We talk a lot like, you know, we work with a lot of people that are in the automotive segment of the business. And a lot of them, the vast majority of the business they do is on Ford F-150 pickup trucks, Honda Accords, Subaru Outbacks, yada, yada, yada. But they build a website and their social media is only filled with when they're the exotic cars that are coming in. The issue with that is not that you shouldn't sprinkle that in to show that you do high quality work. The issue with that is the person with the Ford F-150 might get the idea that your brand is that you service high end, exotic, you know, sports cars, things like that. So they may actually look somewhere else because they feel like you're not a good fit. The brand you're sending out is that you do work on these type of cars when the reality is you want to do the work on, you know, all types of cars. So you really have to, even on social media, you have to make sure that your posts are in line with your brand. I mean, I don't want you to feel too tied up and too handcuffed to be like, oh, you know, overthink every post. But you really do have to think that every little piece of content that you put out becomes part of your brand. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, it's especially when, you know, I'm not trying to tell anybody what to do, in, in, but in um, times where people get very offended about different things, I, from a marketing perspective, I would say you're probably better off to steer clear of things that could be potentially a charged issue. And you could be like, well, it's my business. I'm going to post whatever I want. But just understand that that post becomes part of your brand. For good or for bad, it becomes part of your brand. I think that goes back to a conversation we've had before of separating your personal and your business brand. If it's something that personally affects you and that you want to vent about, maybe do it on your personal page versus your business page. And that yeah. obviously if it's something where you, it, you just want to be transparent and this is what you want to do on your business brand, then that's fine too. Cause if that's 
the 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 route that you want to go. But if it's one of those, like I said, and I always bring up this, it's like I was doing Formula One and and different stuff that didn't make sense on my business brand. It's like if somebody's looking for marketing stuff, they're not going to want to or care. They might care, but it doesn't. It's not relevant to have F1 stuff being posted on my yeah. business page. So it's or it's, if you really want to post that because you really like F1 and you're a marketing agency like we are. It might be pulling something out like I'm a huge F1 fan and I noticed that, you know, Red Bull's doing this really cool marketing thing that I wanted to talk about. And that way you're sort of saying to people, yeah, you know, at a personal level, I, I really enjoy F1 racing, but I'm bringing it back to the brand and saying, hey, this is what I thought was really cool about what Red Bull's been doing race lately or or something like that. That way you can weave in some personalized things, I think. But you don't want to. Should have asked you about this a year ago then because I, I, I could have tied it all up and I could still be doing F1 stuff on there. So. No, I mean, I think that I think that 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 because I don't think we're we're robot. I don't think as a business owner, you want to be a robot and never show any of your personality. But I think, you know, if you're posting, if you're a small business in a local community and you post something about which candidate you're supporting for the school board you know the the school board elections to some people that's going to speak about you know that maybe more so than you even anticipated might speak a little bit about i mean we have a gas station in the town that i live in and they had a and i'm not even gonna go into what but they had a particular sticker that was kind of politically charged in their little like carousel of stickers that they sell in the in the gas station and it erupted into a whole thing on the town facebook group about how people weren't going to get gas at that gas station anymore because this gas station was selling a sticker that was extremely politically charged and i thought you know that's I, I think as a business owner you don't want to go there it's okay to be a little bit transparent but you don't want to alienate a certain degree of people just because, you know, so you just got to be cautious. Yeah. No, I think that kind of goes with what I was thinking into the next question, as far as you could do that stuff. If you know, if you are in a small community and can kind of have a conversation, it's a conversation starter with people versus just like, Hey, I do marketing. It's like, Hey, these are kind of things I'm noticing. Is this something you're into as well? And then it kind of turns into that.